Shabbat Shalom one more time. Uh, you are welcome to this morning's Shabbat. And uh, the title of our parasha of this morning is known as Nasa. That is, or rather Naso, because our language we call it Nasa, but in some other tongue they call it Naso. But we call it Naso, that is the parasha of this morning. And I subtitle it, Raise Your Head. To raise your head. The parasha of this morning is known as, na, uh, as, Nasa, uh, as Nasa, but the, 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 the subtitle is known as Raise your head to introduction. Parasha Naso is the longest single parasha in the Torah. It continues from where the previous parasha ends, detailing the charges of the Levites' uh, families and other matters connected to their service of dismantling, erecting, and carrying the path of the Mishkan, that is the sanctuary. If we remember that like last two weeks, because last week was what was Shavuot, last two weeks we, we discussed about Bar Midbar, and in there uh, the, the Torah speaks uh, about the canting of the Levite. We, we, we know that when the old children of, of Israel were canted, the Levite were not canted, right? It, it, God said, do not cant them. Because we do not count them, I included the entire uh, uh, people of Israel because the inheritance of the Levite is God Himself. They are separate, they are set apart to serve the living God in the Mishkan. So their numbers were not included in the entire census that was taken at uh, uh, Parasha Bamidbar. So uh, now it is time that God said that they should count them specially. So now uh, Moshe and Aaron were commanded by God to count them for their service in the in the what in the mohe, uh, in the in the uh, 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 that is in the uh, sanctuary. God, uh, each and every family has a particular uh, task to be done. It is not zigzag. It, it is not uh, food for all or cake for all. No, 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 no. In the things of God, there is what there is orderliness. That is what I want us to get from this case. It's not oh I can do whatever I, I want to do. No. In the temple, you cannot do whatever you want to do, even though if you have, um, I mean, if you have a good intention, like we can see in the life of this of the two sons of Aaron, you know, the two uh, the two firstborn that passed away, that died uh, while offering an alien fire before the Lord. Yes, these men they have good intention. But that is not how it, it, it has to, to be done. There is an orderliness in the things of God, in the universe. People think, oh, everything is chaotic. No, in the universe, everything is orderliness. The sun is in the center. The planet moves around it. Everything is order. If there, if there is no orderliness, we won't, it won't exist. So in the things of creation, according to the commandment of, of, of the Most High, blessed be He, everything is commanded and you have to follow your own path. Yes, some people might say, oh, why, do, why should I be the hand? I want to be the leg. Uh, why should I be the eyes? I want to be the, the, the nose. It is not, it is the way God has placed you. That is, that is how you have to follow your own duty and your own job in the, in the temple. So God told Moshe and, and Aaron to can them according to the family, to the work, to the task that that to be done in the temple. The parasha then go, uh, goes back in time to the eighth day, the day of the inauguration of the sanctuary, and details several laws that were given then concerning purity, that is sarat, you know, and uh, the moral law, uh, that is about theft, and, uh, and uh, as well as the laws of the sota, the wayward wife, and the Nazareth. The Prasha also relates the wording of the priestly uh, blessing that we are going to also look on this morning for more in-depth and more uh, 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 look, you know, in-depth look of the, of the wording of this blessing uh, to the children of Israel that were said by Aaron for the first time on the day, uh, on the day time of the eighth day. The final chapter of the Prasha then details the offerings of the twelve princes of the of the tribes of, of Israel that were brought to the sanctuary. On these days, the Mishbek uh, was inaugurated by donation of the of the princes. The final verses of the chapter and Parasha connect us back to the beginning of the book of Bayekra when Moshe had the voice of, of the Holy One, blessed be he, emanating from the holies of holies inside the tent of meeting and was allowed to enter. The word 
na so mean to can't that is literally it means to lift up that is lift your head up to lift up as Moses was commanded to lift up the head as so as to can the head of the Levites the word also can mean to carry or to bear you need to understand that the uh, uh, nasok also can mean to carry or to bear and knowing fully well that the Torah is a body I want us to understand that Torah is a body and we have been commanded to bear this body it is a heavy load. It is. It is not easy. It is not. Uh, uh, it is not. Most people think it is like honky dory. It is not honky dory. It is tough because we are set apart. We are set apart people to bear this burden of holiness, this burden of righteousness, this burden of faithfulness before the Lord, so that the whole world can see that we are different from others. So that through us, other people can come into the relationship with the Almighty God. So. Uh, okay, uh, the, the charges of all the Levites to carry the path of the sanctuary from encampment to encampment. Thus, Moses lifted up the head of the Levites, who in turn carried the sanctuary. I'm going to do something a little bit uh, different uh, this morning because we can see from according to the uh, uh, according to the parasha that we read uh, this morning, we can see that the canting was first, and later on the discussion about the purity and the moral uh, behavior and the sota uh, was was included. But I want to start from the uh, from the law of the Nazareth, so I'm going to do it upside down. Okay, one of the laws in this week. Parasha is that of the Nasir. This section is introduced with the word Ichon or Ichaki Yafi, a man or a woman who shall disassociate himself. I repeat again, a man or a woman who shall disassociate himself. Disassociate yourself from what? What are you disassociating yourself from? from or what uh, body are you carrying upon yourself or what body do you want to carry upon yourself rabbi abraham if ezra speaks he said he observed that the word jaffi also can mean who does wonders he explained that a nasir who disassociate himself or herself from wine is doing something wondrous, unlike the typical a, a typical uh, person who is controlled by the pursuit of pleasure. We need to understand that when the Torah talks about wine, what do we understand by the word wine? We understand that wine is a what is a pleasure, right? So it since it is it's a pleasure that brings us, you know, that oh yeah, well, I, I'm enjoying the work of my hands, or I'm enjoying uh, a physical pleasure. And this person, this man, or this woman, disassociate himself or herself from the word the pleasure. He took upon himself or upon herself, saying, I don't want to associate myself with the, word, with the worldly pleasure. I want to associate myself with more, uh, um, with, more something, with something that is more spiritual, with a spiritual uh, 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 pleasure, rather than physical uh, pleasure. Rabbi Simha Bonim said, he added that the section of Nasir teaches us how God helped one who undertake to improve himself. I want to understand that particular word, to improve yourself. God is not asking you or God is not asking me to change. Because we need to understand that in the, in the beginning, in the book of Bereshit, the Holy One said that all things that he has created is good. So man is good. Man is wonderful. Man is great. But what God wants us to do after the fall of man, after the sin in the garden, what God is actually inquiring from each and every one of us is to what is to improve his way. This is the same word that God used when he was talking to, to Cain, the brother of Abel. He said, listen Cain, that, this, that sin is at the door. He said, sin is pushing after you. You have to improve your way. You have to stop imagining negativity towards your brother. But Cain never listened. And we saw the consequence. So therefore, the same word the rabbi is using here, that God wants each and every one of us to do what? To improve our way. To improve yourself. So I can improve myself into a higher level of spiritual, of that, of, of spiritual understanding 
improve myself in a higher level of intimacy with the Holy One, in a, in a higher level of relationship. It, we have different type of, of relationship. When you are started, uh, when you start as a believer, when you start, I know there are a lot of people that are watching me online. If you are not born into a Jewish family, or if, if you are a convert, or like uh, we that are born into a Jewish family that we grow as a Jew, is different. So we have a different level of intimacy with the Holy One. So the convert grows in stages, even though Israelites grow, grow in stages. So God is saying, if you take upon yourself a body of Nasir, okay, as a Nazarite, to, 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 to separate yourself from worldly pleasure, from you know, all the costly and bossy of life, and you want to dedicate yourself for more spiritual intimacy, more relationship with the Holy One. He said that it is good for a man or for, or for, for, a, for a woman to be able to improve themselves. Becoming a Nasir is a wondrous thing indeed. It is nearly impossible to be around, uh, around people who are enjoying normal pleasure and to refrain from partaking. Nevertheless, because the Nasir undertake sincerely to be different, to, to, to separate himself or herself, to set himself or herself apart from the other side. We know, we, we, is, this is what the rabbi is saying. Because the Nasir take up this body upon himself or upon herself to set himself or herself apart from worldly pleasure. From the, you know, I want to get this, I want to get this, I want to uh, have this, I want to, 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 to have this. All the days of your life, your mind is only about material things. All the days of your life, your mind is only about financial things. All the days of your life, your mind is only a, 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 about, you know, how to beautify your, I mean, your physical bo uh, body. Not beautifying the spiritual body. Because we need to understand that the physical body will pass away. But the spiritual body, your soul, which is the most important, where is it going to be? Because if you do not feed the spiritual, uh, the spiritual self, which is your soul, where are you going to be? Most of us, we, we, we are only, uh, 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 I mean, we are only co concerned about, you know, how beautiful I am to purify our physical body. I'm not saying it is bad, don't mi mi misunderstand me. No, 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 it is good. But when you take it as the primary thing, that is when the problem is. Because the physical body is not the primary thing, but the spiritual body. You can, you, God is not saying that you should go around being, being dirty or stinking. No, 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 no. Don't misunderstand me, please. Or don't take my word out of context. What I'm saying here is that this physical body is important, but it's not the primary thing. But this, well, the most important thing is the spiritual soul, which is the most important thing, which you have to feed more and more. So, as it is said that uh, uh, to set yourself apart, to be on the other side, like our father Abraham <laughs> Abeno. We, we, we remember that they called him, uh, 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 that he set himself apart. He was on the other side of the Jordan. Okay? He was on the other side. So, but why the, the rest of the world were on the other side? So, it has a very uh, spiritual implication. Because Abraham decided to separate himself from the rest of the world to do what to serve the only, uh, uh, the, 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 the only one, blessed be he, the God, of, uh, 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 the, God the, the creator of the entire universe. While the rest of the world were serving idols and the works of their own hands. So this man or this woman uh, who, who is a Nazir set themselves apart just like Abraham on the other side to do what? To be more spiritual, uh, to have more spiritual intimacy with the Holy One. And he said that the same thing is true of any person who wants to improve themselves. Once one makes a sincere commitment to improve oneself, to improve yourself positively, even if improvement appears impossible, Adonai, the Holy One, will help you. Once you sincere, everything is about sincerity. Everything is, is from the bottom of your heart. When you, you are sincere from the bottom of your, of your heart to improve yourself, to, 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 to improve your way of life into a higher level of relationship, into a positivity. I'm not talking about negativity here. I'm talking about positivity. Then by serving the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, then with this, the Holy One is saying, even though if it, is, if it looks impossible, 
the Lord will assist you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will put his, word, his invisible hand to lift you up. This has happened several times in my own life. It is not that it is a story. This is the, it is not a story. When I was back, uh, back in, in Russia, when, when I was at the, at the university studying, there's a lot of time that I feel that this, this task is absolutely impossible. But at the end of the day, God just helped me through to escape over the hurdle. So it, it, it is, it, the most important thing, number one, is what? Is the sincerity. One, the Lord God see that sincerity is willing to do what? To help you out. This week, parasha is, all, is always uh, read on either the Shabbat before or more commonly, the Shabbat after Shavuot, which we are just doing. The idea that Adonai desire a sincere commitment is close the tie to the holiday of the giving of the Torah, which is which we just uh, 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 celebrated the uh, the festival of of Shavuot. The to support of Aboda Zara three uh, A teach that although Asedis says that the heavens and earth can can exist only if we study the Torah. In fact. It is a sincere commitment to study rather than the actual study that keep the world going. That is what the said. The said I said he's saying that it is not because you read the Torah or study the Torah that makes the world to continue, but our sincere uh, uh, action, our sincerity that we want to do it, that is what helps you. That is what keeps you up going. That is what makes the world to continue. Uh, uh, to rule because if you say I, I want to do this, you know, but you are not sincere about it, it just it just a, a mere word. But when you are sincere about it, that sincerity will push you into action. And once that push you in, into action, you start doing that particular thing that you are sincere to uh, to do. But if if but if you are not uh, sincere, no matter what, we might say, okay, I want to do this, I want to leave this one up. If there is no sincerity. Yeah, just wasting your time. When the Torah describes the, the, the count of the tribe of Levi, at the onset of this week reading, it uses the expression, raise the head of the tribe of Levites. It says, raise the head of the tribe of Levi. At first glance, this is strange to present the matter. The Torah should say directly, can the tribe of Levi, by using the uh, the the the, uh, the uh, expression rise the uh, the head. The Torah communicates to us a subtle but vital lesson, and that is the pure number of counting or the pure number by themselves are insufficient when we wish to appreciate the value of tribes group or individual for if that group or individual does not have a sense of pride or a sense of mission and purpose then numbers alone in the long run are almost worthless that is what the torah is saying when the torah uses the word you know what lift the head of the of the of, of levy the torah did not use the same word when when it was saying can't the people, uh, I mean, the entire people of Israel, he used another word. But in, in this word, he's, he's using the word naso, which means to do what, literally to lift up their head. Because I want to, to give what this explanation perfectly well in which the Torah is speaking about. He's saying to lift up your head. It's, Torah is not talking about being proud here. No. But you have to understand that there is, uh, 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 you have to, there is a, 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 a worthiness for what they are doing, for their work, for their service in the Mishkan. If you are, a, a, for example, if you are a medical a doctor, right, your job is to inspect and to see that people are healthy, or if there, are, if, if, if there is a problem, you prescribe for them medication and so on and so forth. But if, if you do not take pride in your job or in your work, nobody can help you to, to, to do that. So you have to take pride in yourself, but we, we need to, to understand here that there is there must be a balance, okay? But if if you are too proud, then there's going to be a problem. There's oh that doctor is a proud man, 
then you have a client, right? But then the, you have to be uh, sober and at the same time, you have to have a pride in your job, in your service, that what you are doing matters. That without you, this person will have died. That without you helping, this person will have been sick. So that pride, in taking pride in your work, in, in no matter what you do, even though if you, my mama always tells me this particular saying, he said, as a Hebrew person, no matter what, what you do, you will always prosper. prosper. I ask her, like, even though if you sell, uh, if you are a trader on the street, you say yes. She said yes. Because a Hebrew person, our, 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 our tradition back in, in Ethiopia, that you take pride in what you do. And once people sense that sense that you take pride in what you do, they know that you know what you are doing perfectly well. Did they know that it is not like uh, there's a saying in English? I don't know how to say. It. They say like uh, a, 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 a master of all work is a, is, is a, a, something like a master of all work is is, a, is someone that knows knows nothing. Something like that because you know everything. Uh, you know them small small. You know you don't know that you, you don't know them. You don't know it in depth. So that is where the problem is. But when you take pride in what you do, you know your job in depth. You know exactly what you are doing. And so, therefore, people can say, oh, that guy is a trader, I know, I know what he does, he, 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 so he's a professional. He's a doctor, oh, what, that guy is a professional a doctor. It's not just all these people that doesn't understand anything, or from, from one country that takes his, his diploma. Or, uh, this guy is a contractor, he knows what he does perfectly well. So, and people will take pride in it, uh, people will be able to come, have confidence in you, and they will come and they will patronize you. And so, therefore, you become more, more what? More uh, uh, prosperous in whatsoever you do. So, this is what God is saying here, that we should take pride, lift up our head, be proud, not, not your, your back bend, no, but be proud, mix your head up, raise your head up, and be proud in your activities, in your service in the temple. The Levite were assigned a special role in, Israel, uh, in, in the Israeli uh, society and temple uh, service. They were also to be teachers of Israel. And perhaps just as importantly, the role model for the entire congregation and public uh, service. It is no accident or random choice that the greatest public servant the one has ever known, Tisha Moshe, was a Levite. Because unless leadership filled the impetus of mission and exalted responsibility upon itself, it can neither achieve the fulfillment of its assigned task. So as I just explained now, that no matter what, if you as a leader does not feel the impetus, the weight of your responsibility, then there's going to be a problem. But you have to raise up your head. You have to understand that I am a leader, and people are watching after me. People are looking after me. They want me to. Uh, they, they are going to copy whatsoever I do, and that is a problem in the world uh, today. Where our leaders, uh, you know, they, they say, do what, what what I say, don't do what I do. How, what type of a lesson is that? What type of I mean? What, what type of a teaching is that? When the leader will say, do what I say, but do not do what, what I do. But the Torah is saying, the, the people should be able to do exactly what their leaders are doing. Right? The, the, the people copy from the leader, just like, like the children copy exactly from their parents. Whenever you, you tell your children, for example, don't do this, don't do this, or do this, or, or do this. That is not the best uh, uh, example. The best example of how a, a child learn is to copy exactly what the parents are doing. So if you want your child to be a good child or your, or your children to be good, you begin to do good things and your children will copy after you and they begin, begin to do exactly what you are doing. The word is like it goes in here, it comes out in here. You know that is the, the nature of human, that we, we, are, we are all human beings and as far as we are the DNA of Adam and Eva, that is who we are. But the best example is what to do what is right in the sight of our children and they copy expressly and they do exactly what we do. So as a leader of a co -co community, you want to, 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 to tell your people the old rules, the old laws, the old laws, the old 613 uh, 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 but you do nothing. 
Uh, but you, you want your people to, to be doing it, but you yourself, you don't do it. How does that work? How are they going to, to, to follow after you? They tell you that this man is just blah, 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 and nothing more. So therefore, as a leader, I'm, I'm I, I challenging each and every one of us, as if, uh, because we are all leaders in our respective houses, in our respective homes, in our respective ways of life. At your work, you know, it is not saying, you know what, uh, I'm a child of God only on the Shabbat. No. You should, you should be a child of God all year round. Or even though at home, at work, anywhere you go, you should show that example that you are different, that you are set apart. That is what I'm trying to tell us here, that you are not like them. So them seeing it, they will say, oh, actually, it's not only different at home, it's the same everywhere. This man, this woman is constant. It's not that you are, you are like this today to tomorrow you, you do another thing. As well. So uh, how, can I, how can I take example from you? That is the point. So that is what, what I'm trying to say that as a leader, we have to do exactly what we say. We don't say something and we don't do it, but we are expecting others to do it. This can only be accomplished by raising one's head, by having a sense of pride and self-worth and an individual commitment to excellence in the performance of one's duty and obligations. Be they personal or, or, uh, or uh, uh, societal, by using the phrase, raise the head, the Torah emphasizes to us the correct and eternal way of, ass of assessing human number and accomplishment. What's our accomplishment, uh, accomplishment as a human being? What do you accomplish in your life? What do I accomplish? It is not only by saying, okay, I want to count the census just like the way the other tribe were counted. But the Levite has a special duty, a special responsibility. And their responsibility is to be a teacher, a guardian to the entire people of Israel. For them to see and to understand that this, uh, this is a leader. And we have to do exactly what we are commanded. To, to do and how do you do that you have to take pride in whatsoever you do as a mom as a father uh, as a sister uh, as a brother you know as as a rabbi as a uh, as was well, as any position that you might you, you might have be uh, 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 at home be it in, in the office it doesn't matter but you say oh what if i'm a cleaner of course if you're a a cleaner, you take pride in cleaning. Why you clean it perfectly where people will recognize and say, This man is a perfect one, he's a professional. And so, therefore, if you open your own private business, people will, you work, you will be patronized before you because you know what you're doing perfectly well. You, have, you take pride in whatever you do. This is, Oh, how can I cannot take pride uh, of being uh, a, a rabbi? Actually, if, if, you, if people take, ask that question, then the man that is asking himself so, such a question needs to, to have his head examined because as a real, as a rabbi you are the leader of, of a group of people you can't do, you can't be a, a, a rabbi without you being elected or choosing to, to be a leader so if you lead then people know people recognize that you, you you are worthy for you to be to be that she, uh, to be that shepherd because if, if as a she, she shepherd if you if you don't shepherd the people well then the wolf will come and take them away so you, as a shepherd, you, you should be standing by to, to, to defend the people even with your own life. That is a, a good shepherd according to what Yeshua HaMashiach said. A good shepherd will lay down his life for, for the sheep. Not when the wolf comes or the lion comes, the shepherd will, will be the one to run away. In, in the course of captain that I took, they said in a, a captain of a sheep or of an airplane, if there is a, if there is a desert, a, a disaster for God forbid the last person to leave a ship or to leave the aircraft is the pilot the first one to leave are the passengers but the last person to leave a ship or an aircraft is always the pilot so you have to inspect and see that everybody is safe everybody, because the life of those people are in your hands you have to take care of them and protect it and guide it because life is, is sacred so that is what the, uh, the Torah is teaching us uh, this morning. And closing, modesty and humility are necessary uh, traits for all of us and they are extremely necessary for those who find themselves in the position of public uh, leadership, spiritual uh, guidance and education. Yet, 
in these areas of human uh, characters, like all in other areas of thought and behavior. A proper sense of balancing is required. A teacher Moshe is the most humble and self effacing of all human beings, yet he realized that he is Moshe, that, that his face shines with godly eternity, and that upon him lies the responsibility for, pres uh, for preserving the people and their loyalty to the Torah. Therefore, his head is raised while at the same time his inner self retains the, the humility that characterizes his nature. This is very uh, delicate uh, balancing. Uh, sorry, this is a very delicate balancing act, and many a potentially great leader has failed because of an excess of pride on one hand and meekness on the, on the, on the, on, on the other hand. So this is what just what I just I just explained uh, 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 before that we have to be able to do to balance our actions. So ever we do has to be balanced. As creation is balanced. God creates the, the positive and He creates the negative. Everything is balanced before God. It is how you perceive. It is your, perspe it is your perspective that def defer what is positive and negative. You decide. God has created everything. You decide within yourself. So that, and that is why God has given us that word, that free will. He said, okay, man, you decide. I've given you everything. Everything is before you decide. If you want to use it for good, use it for good. If you want to use it for, for the negativity, you use it. But the consequence will surely come. If you decide to use it for the negative, you, there, there is a consequence. If you want to use it for positivity, that's a blessing. That's also a, a consequence, but a positive one. So we decide whatsoever we want to use the creation of God for, we decide. So this is the same thing here that as a, as a, as a leader, how do you raise your head? Do you want to raise your head to benefit your people? Or do you want to raise your, your, your head in pride? In, I mean, in a negative pride, I mean. You know, oh, I am the best, I am the greatest, I am the tallest, I am the most powerful. Nobody is as powerful as me. So you can use the power that, that you have to do to oppress the people. So you decide. But re remember that the consequence is always there. We find, for instance, King Shaul was reprimanded by the prophet uh, uh, Samuel for being overly modest and therefore weak in the, in the response to public uh, pressure. The prophet said to him, you may be small in your eyes, in your own eyes, but you are the head and leader of the tribes of Israel. These are the people that they call themselves presently the, uh, the liberal, you know? You know, ah, this is what the people say, let's go, up, let's go along with the masses. Even though if the masses are wrong, let's go along with them, you know? When God said, kill everybody, everybody, all of them, all of them, all the Amalekites, all of them, remove them. The children, the women, are you saying that you are more, uh, 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 you are more humane uh, 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 than God? You are more righteous than God? God has said remove all of them. He has a reason. Because they were wicked to the people. When the Israelites moved out from Israel, from Egypt, they went and started killing the people, the weak ones. Not the strong ones. But the weak ones at the back, they slaughtered them for no reason. And God said, you shall not forget. You shall surely remember what this, these people did. And when you settle in your land, then you shall avenge. And what God said, it is the word of God, it is, it is not me. It is not my own word. So why are you now being a uh, you know, liberal? You know, the people say, oh, no, 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 no. You know, somebody committed a crime. A man took a knife and slot a no, mother and his fellow. Mother a woman. Mother a, a child. I said, okay, you know what? Uh, don't kill him because we don't kill. Let's take him and put him in, in jail. And my tax money is being used to, to feed a criminal. A man that's ought to be sentenced to face his own judgment for what he has done wrong. It, 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 it's not that it happened accidentally. If it is accidentally understand, that is different. And I'm repeating myself again, don't take my word out of context. Because you might say this rabbi is a wicked man. No. The Torah speaks black and white about that. If it happened accidentally, if it, it happened by mistake, that is different. But if a man meditate, he, he plan everything out, like a medical doc, uh, doctor, the one that happened here in Quebec, 
You want to separate from, from your wife. So why are you killing all the innocent child? I say because it has stress. So your stress makes you to go and kill your own children. So if you can kill his own children, how much more a, a someone that is already know? Then I say, make good do uh, doctor. How can you be sure that this man can, can save life? He can go and be prescribing wrong medicine to be killing people if he can kill his own children because he wants to, to divorce from his wife. That what, what, what a, a man that, that plan evil, not that it happens accidentally, but planning from A to Z to murder. That's what the, the Torah says. When you murder somebody, you face the consequence of your action. Not take him and put him in jail and say, feed him with taxpayers' money. And then he comes out and repeats and, and, and do the worst. That is where the problem is. These and people. We have a key for. Uh, for these, pe these people, they comes out and they, be, they even become. They do the worst of the worst. That's where the problem is. It's not that they change or, or they improve their way, but they become even evil and more worse. So we should not do that. Throughout history, all of us, as especially those that find themselves in roles of familiar, societal, educational, and religious uh, leadership, are challenged by this exequit balancing act. How to have a humble heart and raise head at one and the same time. A demand that the Torah plays upon us all. So act. At the same time, we must be humble and at the same time we must raise our head. It is a very delicate act. It is very tough because if you are too weak, people will say it's too weak and it cannot be a leader. And if you are too proud, it's, it's too proud, it cannot be a, a leader. So everything must be balanced. Whatever we do in our life, we must balance it up. In your family life, I repeat myself please, in your family life, as a father, as a mother, as children too, you have to balance your, your act up. The father must balance his act, the wife must balance Balance are at the leadership. Even if you find yourself as a leadership in your work, you still have to balance it out. You have to show that example that you are different, that you are not like them, that we are not like the people of the world, that we are separate, that we are taking upon ourselves the responsibility and the tax to serve the living God in the righteous way, in the perfect way, and to have an intimate relationship with our most high God. But I'm not talking about I'm not talking about religion here. I'm not talking about say because you go to the Shabbat every uh, every uh, Saturday means that you are close to God. No, you might go to Shabbat all the days of your life and you are the worst person in the universe. And there might be people who doesn't go to, to to Shabbat, but their action speaks louder than their words. So that that is what I'm saying here. So therefore, please, it is very important for us as individuals, as a group of people, as Kehillah Beta Israel, for us to balance our act, to ba balance whatever we, we, we do in our life, that we should have that intimate relationship, not religion, intimate relationship with the Most High. Shabbat Shalom.